What's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Higgs Fishing. Today is finally the day we're going to do the walkthrough of My Vibe Seaghost 110. I hope you guys are as excited as I am. Let's get it. Welcome back. Uh, we're going to do the walkthrough. Now we're going to start the walkthrough of my Seaghost 110. Um, before we get started, I'm going to do a couple caveats. I've said this before. I'm not pro staff. I don't work for Vibe. Um, I'm giving you an honest review of the product and an honest walkthrough of my setup and how things work for me. Um, another thing I wanted to go over is this, this is not intended to be a look at the stuff I own video. Look at my setup. If you're interested in kayak fishing or if you own a Seaghost or whatever, this is intended to give you some ideas of maybe how you could set up your tournament boat or maybe some ideas of why you might want to get this boat if you're looking at a new one. So not pro staff, not, not a trying to show you what I have, really just trying to give you a walkthrough of the boat uh, to give you a feel for how I fish, how things work for me, um, and how things can help you. Um, one more thing before we get started, I'm not going to go in depth on everything that Vibe puts in these boats. I'm going to link the video that Vibe has below. They do a one or two minute video on all their stuff um, so that you can kind of go see what they what they put on the boat on, uh, at the factory. So, bow to stern walkthrough. Here we go. Starting at the bow. One of the things I like about this Vibe Seaghost is it's got two, two separate dry wells. Now, this is not waterproof dry well. This is the water resistant dry well. You will not get water in here as long as you're paddling and you keep the boat upright. But if you flip over, water will get in here. I like this because I use it typically for extra snacks, that sort of thing. That I don't necessarily need to grab readily available. So I can pull off to the side and get them. I've also got a dry bag a buddy of mine gave me. Um, this will eventually be for my uh, rain suit, the bottoms and the top. So I can keep them out of the elements. I'll typically put stuff like that up here that I don't necessarily need to get a hold of. The other thing I like on all of the Vibe products is the dry bag and these dry wells comes out. So when you take the dry bag out for this particular boat, the boat is an open hole design. It's one of my favorites. I, as you can see, use the open hole design uh, for my battery box. I have a built-in battery box and we'll go over that project in a later video. But a lot of people use this open hole storage for extra rods, their tent, um, their camping chair, all that other stuff. When you go on a long camping trip, you can throw it in there the stuff that you don't necessarily need to get to, you can throw it in there, take it with you, um, and kind of forget about it until you need it, until you're ready to use it. So, one of the things, that's the front, dry hatch, lock in place, and that's the front dry hatch. Um, the other thing I'll go over in a system is the paddle park. This is actually from Vibe. Vibe does a great job with this built-in paddle park, and it works great. Um, Moving back to the center, I love, one of the things I love about the Seagrass as a whole is it's a center console type, but you've heard me talk, you've heard me talk before about some of these kayaks being open concept versus center console. I like center console because it allows my storage to be in the boat, not on my person. Um, a lot of times for the open concept, uh, you'll have guys who go out and buy the NRS Chinook. Um, you've seen me wear a couple of some of the pictures. The PFDs with all the extra pockets because you need the extra storage. With this boat, I don't, which it also allows me, I'm kind of skipping ahead, to use my Onyx AM24 inflatable PFD when I'm on the water because this PFD, it's an inflatable and it feels like it's nothing. And I can do that, I can wear that because I don't need the extra space. Um, my setup for fishing and the way I set mine up is I've got two Omega. Uh, Yak Attack Omega rod holders. Um, for this fishing season, I'm probably going to only use one because KBF only allows you to use one rod at a time. And it's a whole lot easier. And it just keeps you from accidentally grabbing a rod and using two. And it, if you're taking pictures of your fish, you don't even want the extra rod in the picture because then it, al it allows for too much controversy or you using two rods, blah, 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 blah. 
keep one rod holder in front and I've got two rod holders in the back that will go over when we get there so that it just separates everything and keeps it nice and clean. Um, I've got a Hummingbird Piranha Max 4 uh, 2D. That is my fish finder. Um, I like this boat because I, and I've got it on a ram mount because I can take my ram mount off here. This is my favorite spot for it, but I've used it before sometimes where I'll take it off and I'll put it here on the side or on that side. That, that way I can kind of see a little bit more maybe if I need to use this. Um, so I've got the Piranha Max 4. It does what I need it to do. It's a pretty good, pretty good fish finder. Uh, 2D, so it doesn't give you a whole lot, but it gives you the depth, and it'll give you the depth of the fish and how many fish. Um, we talked about the ram mount, how by having it on the ram mount, it makes it very easy to transition. You'll, you'll notice a trend with the way I fish. I want it to be easy. I want to keep everything versatile and easy. This keeps it versatile so I can move it around. Uh, going back to the battery, why was that battery in there? Well, that battery was in there because it powers my fish finder. But instead of just powering my fish finder, I use it to uh, power any other devices that I have. So I've got a USB connection as well as the 12 volt uh, kind of cigarette lighter connection. And sometimes what will happen is I will actually have to move the RAM out over the side because I'm using the USB for my phone or whatever else. So that's how I power my fish finder. And one of the things is how I power my fish finder and use my boat power in the front. Now, one of the other things about this boat that's amazing is it's already got a built-in transducer. This port right here is for your transducer. And if you go underneath, and I will, I encourage you to watch the Vibe video because I'll show you below how easy the install is. The um, transducer goes, the transducer cord goes through this, and then the transducer mounts below. And there's already a built-in grate underneath your kayak that protects your transducer at the bottom. We're not going to flip this whole thing over just to look at it. But the video will be linked below and you can easily see the transducer um, plate and how it's protected and so on and so forth. Um, the other thing that I really like about this other thing, I've said it three times. Again, one of the things I really like about this is the center console. I like the center console and we'll go through that real quick because number one, I've got my tunes. I keep my, uh, my small conveniences. Uh, this is an EcoBoost. Bluetooth speaker. It's $30. It's waterproof and it floats. Again, not trying to spin an arm and a leg, but I've got everything I need. This will run for eight hours. And so I can put Pandora on whatever I want while I'm fishing and I'm good to go. I got it. Um, in a previous video, we went over my Plano and everything that I have in my tackle box. Well, those two side pouches that we talked about with the soft plastics and with the other one that has all my tools and that sort of thing in it. When I go fishing, I'll typically take those off. I'll typically take those off because I like to put all that stuff in here. So imagine you're fishing, you have everything you need to re rig and, and this is just for the video. I've got more stuff that I normally put in. You've got your knife, you got your fish grips, you got your pliers, um, and then you've got your, uh, what I'll typically put in here is not all my soft plastics, but my soft plastics that I'm gonna use throughout that day. Um, and then one other thing I have in here that I rarely use, but I do have an anchor. Um, I, I always say that I haven't gone over my anchor, but I do have an anchor. I bought this this year. Um, I, I rarely use it. I really bought it for the other boat for when we go crappy fishing, but I, at this point I keep it in this boat just in case I need it. So that's what I keep in my center console. Um, obviously it's got the cup holder, which works great, and so on and so forth. Um, the other thing I'm gonna go over real quick is these Jack Roto grips. I've seen people buy two. I don't think you need two. You just need one. You need to figure out what size works, what side left or right works best for you. Um, what I will typically do when I am paddling is I will use my paddle. And this is the, this paddle goes in the paddle park right here. Um, and I will use the this paddle to get where I need to go. Like this is your major mode of transportation. If I'm fishing, I don't use my anchor a lot. And if a boat passes by, you're liable to start weaving. So typically what I'll do if I'm weaving a lot and a boat is knocking me around, I will use this to reposition myself. I'll put my rod in one of these rod holders, I'll use this to reposition my, myself, and it goes back to why do you have a paddle park? So you can throw the paddle park in here and just drop it. You drop it right in the roto grip, and it takes you two seconds. You throw it in the paddle park, drop it in the roto grip, and now I'm grabbing my rod back from this rod holder, and I'm fishing. So I've lost 10 seconds. Um, Another tool that I have, and I'll go over that in a second. 
So that's one reason this is a $14 item and it can save you a lot of headache. Before I used it, without this, you throw it in the paddle park, excuse me, you throw it in the paddle park, but it doesn't really have anywhere to go. So there, were, there was a couple times I threw it in the paddle park and it would literally go off the boat. Now I'm like, okay, I don't have my, my, my paddle. So that's part of the reason why to spend the extra 14 on this. This is an amazing piece of equipment just for that. Uh, now, if one, another piece of equipment that I use a lot that I'm going to go ahead and, and recommend if it's just standard uh, the water flow that's moving you around, it's not a, a obnoxious boat or something like that. The uh, backwater salt paddle. If you're moving around a little bit, like I caught myself when I started using my hand because I'm like, I don't want to get my paddle out. I just want to use my hand or whatever. This thing was like 35 bucks and this thing has been the most amazing buy because it takes one or two paddles. Get me, get me repositioned back to my casting spot and throw it back under the, uh, throw it back under the, the seat. And with the vibe, uh, with the floor mats that I put in, typically it doesn't make any noise when I throw it back down there, so I'm not scaring the fish. So, great product to use. Really enjoyed it. Um, obviously, as we move back, this is what you'll see. You'll, you'll notice a couple of things. This goes to the Bigsby battery, like we showed you before. This is the Bigsby remote. Right now, I just have it laying here because I'm probably going to use it on my wrist. Um, so that's why it's just laying here versus showing it. A lot of guys will show it where they're going to keep it. I've also seen some guys put it here. I might do that, but I just feel like that's going to be out of the way to figure to speed up and slow down the boat. Uh, another thing I love about this this boat is the tackle trays. So always use your tackle trays. And like we've said before, um, these tackle trays are typically built for a, a Plano 3600. But the Bass Pro does fit. It, they do fit in the slots, but sometimes it's hard to get the bungee over. So what I'll typically keep in these is I'll keep my Bass Pro because these float anyway. I just don't have the bungee that goes over them. And I'll keep my poppers and crankbaits to my left. So I've got mid, mid water and top water to my left. And to my right, I will keep all my hooks, weights, uh, pellets, anything I need to re-rig. So if I've got a Carolina rig and I need to re-rig to a Texas rig, something like that, like I can re-rig it and I can re-rig it right here in front of me. That is one thing I love about this. Oh, caveat. I don't think Bob meant for this, but just for some of you who are looking at getting the Seaghost, um, if you're like me, this notch right here makes for a great cigar holder. I, they're not going to advertise that. I'm just saying. That makes for a great cigar holder while you're trying to do all this and fish. It's pretty phenomenal. Um, just, just throwing it up. Um, moving to the back. My wife got me got me this for Christmas. It's a great addition to the kayak. Um, it's not a bad product. It's a perception product, but it fits perfectly. So last year, I was using just an igloo backpack coil and just setting it here. Well, you flip over one time real quick, you're going to learn real quick that that's probably not a good idea. It's not anchored to anything, it's not tied to anything, so, you know, you really do want to get a solution for your, your uh, cooler that's not just sitting there. For me, this works great, and this works great because all I've got to do is just a plain Jane cooler, but it attaches, it doesn't take up any extra space, and all i got to do is reach back here and get my hand in there, and I can pull out any kind of drink or whatever I need to pull out of it. So that's my cooler. Below my cooler, what you're going to see is you're going to see my, uh, my catch tray. Um, my catch tray is tethered to my chair with a rogue fishing uh, catch tray tether. You don't have to buy a rogue fishing tether. I just like it because it's already made for it and it disconnects. So I can let it go. Um, if you're going to tournament fish, I recommend you just go ahead and get a catch tray. This is $25, $26 piece of equipment. And every single bass fishing tournament out there for kayaks accepts this measuring device. Some of them accept other ones like hog trough, but the ones who do accept others also accept catch. But there are also some like KBF that only accept catch trays. So be careful which one you buy because you may not be able to use it. You gotta read the rules before you start these tournaments. But I can assure you, if you get this, you might find one tournament that doesn't accept catch tray. At this point, it's kind of the standard. Um, so just my plug for catch there. If you're gonna buy one, go ahead and buy catch and we'll go over that later when we go over tournament fishing. Moving on to the back, or I guess we're already here. Um, 
These flush mounted rod holders work great. Uh, these typically are where I keep some of my extra rods. And I keep my extra rods here because um, I can reach right back and get them. So going back to what I said about KBF, you're only allowed to have one rod at a time. So if I have two rods here, I can easily get them and they're not gonna be in a picture or anything. I'm clearly not using them. And if I take a picture of my catch, you're not gonna have a rod showing in the picture and somebody asking you know, or trying to claim that you're using it. It just makes it that much easier. So I'll, I'll, I'll typically have one in the front, I'll have these two in the, in the rear. Um, another thing that they have back here is they have another dry well. The smaller dry well, the, this dry well also comes out. I'm not going to pull it out. And it has access to the whole, to the entire hole below here. But typically for this, um, I'll keep the things that I absolutely have to have, and I leave them in. I have a flag for transportation. I've got about 500 extra feet of 550 cord. I've got, um, I keep a first aid kit in here, and I also keep my boat registration in here because the motorized kayak has to be registered with the or the state of Georgia. So that's typically what I keep in there, just the, the absolute necessities need to have so that you don't necessarily get jammed up on the water because you forgot something. Um, moving back, we've already discussed the Plano in depth and why to buy it, why not to buy it. One of the things I will say um, now that when it's on the kayak, one of the things I like about my setup is this. I've already pulled everything out, now I have it where I need it, right? Like I've got everything up front where I need it. So now that I have that, I can put the Bixby battery in here. Now it's not mounted, there's nothing special to it. Like I said in the previous video, I talked about mounting it to the side here so that it would be permanently mounted, but if I go with the other boat and I move the Bixby, now I've got to unscrew it from this or take this whole milk crate with me. Um, sometimes you don't want to take the whole milk crate, sometimes you just want the battery. And this battery floats anyway, so it fits right in here perfectly. Um, and I can also keep my other two trays in case I need them in here. Um, close it. And then, like I said, guys, like right now I don't have this saddle bag, but I'm still, I've still got this one here. Um, it's really a matter of preference. Uh, if I can get it all up front, typically what I'll do is I'll just take the saddle bags off because I, I like to be as minimal, minimal as possible. Moving on to the back, I've got my, I've got my net. Um, this is one of my favorite nets, that, I, that I, one of my favorite purchases because it breaks down. It's not a yak attack or anything. Uh, it's just a cheap old net. I typically keep it in this rod holder or this one so I can reach around and get it. The middle one's kind of hard. Uh, typically, you don't need it. Typically, I'll just grab it, grab the bass by the mouth. But if it's big enough and it's starting to yank on me, I'm afraid it's going to break the line. I'll go ahead and grab the, uh, go ahead and grab the net and um, use the net. Um, I'll typically grab the net before I get it close enough to the boat or before it, it gets to the point where it's going to break the line. Um, so that's the net. And one of the things you'll, you'll notice here in the back is this flag. Um, I, this is the Yakutak Vizzy Carbon Pro. Now I'm going to go ahead and recommend this product for anybody who doesn't have storage options like, like us here at our house. And the reason is because um, the flag doubles as the bag. So this particular flag breaks down into pieces and it goes inside the flag because it's a bag and it stores perfectly inside of this. Why get this? Uh, it's a safety thing and it's a have to have. Once you've motorized your kayak, you have to have a 360 degree white light and a flag for safety, along with your registration, which you can see in the front. So I would recommend this for anybody who has storage issues. If not, issues. If not, um, the Yakutak Busy pole, it's about 70 bucks, it's $20 cheaper, but it doesn't break down, so you can save 20 bucks. Um, and then as we get to the back, the big speed. I think we already did two, two videos on this, but now you can kind of see how it mounts. Um, I kind of showed you guys when the kayak was kind of flipped around and up on the wall, but now you can kind of see the pin goes right in here, too easy. And I showed you guys these hooks in a previous video here that I put on. Well, here are the lanyards I was talking about. So these two are for your foot pedal steering, and there's a lanyard attached to it. And this is your deployment mechanism. And there's a lanyard attached to it. And the reason for that, the reason I did the lanyards, is when, when it's in my Dodge Ram, my Dodge Ram, the end of the truck bed is about right here. Maybe right here. So as we discussed before, this stuff's expensive, right? If the whole package is $1,200, I can tell you that motor by itself is $600. And I can tell you that because you can go to the website and look at it. I don't want a $600 piece of equipment just bouncing around on the back of my truck. So that's why the lanyards. I can pull it off. When I'm transporting this, this is not sitting back here. 
at all. Uh, they'll be in the truck or it'll be in the cab of the truck somewhere. So there's that. So and one last thing to go over, um, deployment. So just like we sh I showed you before, there were two different types of rudders. The other rudder that flipped all the way around is the one that came with it. So just like that, it's the same concept. But one of the things I like is, you know, we live here uh, in the metro area. And there's a lot of people out there who love Vibe. They, they're the Vibe tribe, and I would consider myself part of the Vibe tribe. Because at this point, I'm about to buy my third Vibe kayak. Um, but we're very fortunate because the shop is here. The shop is like 10 or 15 minutes away. So we can actually take it in. And um, they're still kind of experimenting with how to deploy this thing on this particular platform. The shear water, it's already built in. Uh, but for the Seaghost, it's not. I like this. I think this works great. Um, so in order to deploy it, you're going to put it in the water. You're not going to deploy it in shallow water. You're going to paddle out. Once you get paddled out far enough, you're going to put your paddle back in the regular paddle part. And then you're going to pull this. Once you pull this, give me a second, it's going to deploy. Boom. Now it's a little heavy, so sometimes getting it back up is an issue. You got to pull. And in the water, it's not an issue, but here it's going to yank my boat right off the table. But um, that's just wanted to go over that. That's how it functions. Um, and that's also why when it's in the up position, it doesn't look straight. It's kind of pulled over here to the side, right? Because it doesn't necessarily go straight up. But, I mean, at that point, at that point, I'm not going to argue the aesthetics because it functions, it functions great, um, and it works for what I want it to do. So, just to recap, guys, this is a walkthrough of my Seaghost 130. I hope you got something out of it. I hope you got some ideas for your Seaghost or for your next kayak, or if you're just looking at buying, I hope maybe um, I gave you an idea here to start looking at this one. I'm going to recommend it. Um, in a later video, we're going to go over the three different types or what I would consider the three different price points of a kayak, a beginner kayak being under a thousand, that one thousand to three thousand dollar threshold, and then the three thousand and up, which is like the what you would have for the pros. Um, this used to be the under one thousand threshold. Um, when I bought it, it was 900 bucks. Now it's kind of gone up due to plastics and whatever else. I don't. That, that's kind of what I was told was plastic, but it's $1,100. I would still take a look at it. You may not want it. That's a lot of money, I understand, for your first one. Um, but if you're looking at a kayak, I would certainly consider, I would still consider looking at this one as a beginner. Now, I've got a couple friends who have uh, different kayaks. i got a buddy that's got a Perception Outlaw, and he's finishing his up today. And we're going to do a walkthrough of his at some point. That is certainly below the $1,000 price point. I will tell you when we do the walkthrough why I recommend, certainly would recommend that kayak. Um, so, but again, this one being $1,100, I would still take a look at it. Um, that being said, if you have any other questions, I know I've, it's a brief overview. We'll go, we'll go into other things in depth later. Uh, link them below. Uh, if you have any other questions, just drop a comment below and I'll answer them. Um, anything I can do, I'll even drop a comment below, or excuse me, I'm going to drop some links below on some of the um, things that I have here so that you guys can kind of start researching those. Um, and like I said, I'm definitely going to drop the link below for the Vibe, the Vibe video so you can see what comes standard off the line. Um, that being said, if you've made it all the way through this video, like every video, and you haven't hit subscribe, hit that subscribe button. Uh, we need to get as many people as we can get, and I'm still adamant that we can maybe make it to 100 by the end of the week no i'm not crazy but uh, it would be nice so uh, if you're uh if you're uh watching this and you're getting something out of it seriously hit that subscribe button it helps out the channel it lets me know that this stuff's getting out there and that people are actually getting something out of it um and it'll alert you the next time i make a video so uh this is my vibe sea ghost until next time guys